every speaker has a nightmare inside of them. Yeah, sometime they're going to give a talk, and it's completely going to be sabotaged. And the horrific part of the nightmare is they blew it themselves. Stick around. Today we're going to talk about how not to sabotage your next talk, your next speech. So stick around. Hey, it's a trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back to another Leaders and Communicators. I'm sharing for my 25 years as a broadcaster, as a pastor, as a motivational speaker, and as a leader to help you defy the odds in whatever arena you are in to be a better leader and communicator. Because I believe leadership and communication are forever connected together. And my goal is to help equip you and help you go better and better and defy the odds and achieve your goals. Now, today we're going to be talking about one of those weird things of public speaking. We all have those nightmares. We all have those things that somehow our speech, our talk, just, it tanks. It doesn't connect. People don't relate to it. And we feel like just nothing happened out of it. We've all had it happen. I've had it happen. And in fact, one of the worst cases, going back to my early days of giving a public speak. All right, this goes all the way back to when I was working with youth ministries, and I'm at a summer camp, and at this summer camp, I was asked to give a biblical talk on sex. So I sat down on the stage, and I began to give this talk. And as I do it, I realized my volunteer staff is beginning to laugh and whisper in the background. Now, what I thought was I had said something that was maybe a little bit close off color or a little bit askew and kind of humorous, so I just kept going with my talk. And I'm going, and I'm going, and by the end of the talk, my number one right-hand man comes walk up to me afterwards and says, Rich, did you know your shorts had a rip all the way down the middle, and all we saw were your BVDs the entire talk? Now, I don't know what the kids heard that day, or if they heard anything, or they were in shock and awe that the pastor was showing his BVDs. But it definitely sabotaged my talk. I like the who to never have to go through those experiences. But often we do things that we are not even aware of that we can control to never let it happen to us. The first thing is, honestly, check your clothes before you go on stage. And I'm sure you've heard this before, but I have talked to so many people that have got done with the presentation, and especially for the men, their fly was open. And they get done and they realize, no wonder the crowd was not quite into their speech. Really, take the time. Check your clothes. Check your tie. Ladies, check your blouses. Many ladies have gone on the stage and their skirts are showing something from underneath that shouldn't have ever been shown on stage. Or it's just mangled and twisted a little bit. So take the extra time to make sure your outerwear is proper and it's closed up. It will make a big difference. Now, the second one I want to point out is check your word pronunciations. Nothing is worse than being in the middle of a presentation and you stumble over a word or you say it confidently and it's totally wrong. As a broadcaster, I've always used a phonetic way of pronouncing names because they are now international athletes playing in sports and I don't know how to pronounce them. So I will phonetically say it out after listening to it many, many times. There are audio helps out there to help you get it phonetically right. There is no perfect phonetic code. Write it down the way that you hear it so you can say it the right way, the way you talk and speak. It will help you immensely to stay on track, not lose people's attention when you butchered one of the key names of your entire presentation. Finally, more and more people are using creative slides and elements, and, and, and they're using PowerPoints. I've done this myself. I put my PowerPoints or my presentation slides up, and there was something wrong in the slide. There was a word. There was something a little bit off color, off shade, that made it just humorous, where I didn't intend to have it be humorous. I was once given another talk on sex one time, and I had two cars in a car wreck talking about the wreck of marriage. Well, the two cars were kind of angled in a funny, awkward way, and afterwards I was told 
It was the best illustration to illustrate sexual wreckage, but it was never what I intended to have be intended with that slide. Check your slides. Have somebody else go through them, proofread them, and look for those weird oddities to make sure you never have that moment happen. Because what you will get is people in the audience will start looking around. They will begin to scratch their head and it will take you from being the keynote speaker, the person that knows what they're talking about, it will drop you down to a lesser value. And what you have to say may be great, but the distractions are too much to keep them involved and focused with you and you will lose them in the end. So, have you ever had a big distraction? You have a great story, okay, a horrible story, of a distraction that happened to you and you realize after the fact you could have controlled it. You could have changed it. Was it a slide? Was it a dress thing? Was it a musical number you slid in there to add some oomph into it? Let me know what has worked for you. What are the distractions that have popped up? And how have you corrected them to make sure it never, ever happens again? Thanks for listening today. Until next time, God bless. Have a great week. I'm the Trigger, Rich Bontrager, and we'll see you next time.